It maybe will be a, a short a recording, but I need to tell you what have happened today on Wednesday. And uh, those uh, young boys did come from the Mormon church and my church and uh, I am member of the Mormon church and they come and uh, he start to one of them start to understand that we are related to each other he belonged to my in in my family tree so he start to relax and not be so like the, when they knock on the door to other people uh, they relax and play a little with each other and um, in a childish way uh, and uh, I was thinking they are so young they can be the one of the, it was a new boy and uh, he uh, uh, he maybe is not over 20 years old so they are like children and, uh, and it is very much about where they are coming from because they are coming from big families and uh, they don't need to go and, and look at the world to find friends because they have friends in the family, in the church, and same sort of people. So it is a little strange with them, in that way they are very childish. And it reminding me about my daughter, that she is also the same sort. She is now She's born, uh, born eighty five, but she is uh, like a teenager, and uh, and uh, look exactly the same as these boys. But it's because my daughter have lived with a church, uh, lived inside the church, and work inside the church. Her life have always been around that church and that's why they don't see things uh, as we see it that is adult that they are children still and and when i talking about it it remind me about those that is in the meadow in in heaven that they are playing like children and uh, they never maybe never grow up really or always uh, want to have fun uh, and uh, and not really take care of the true life because they are in like in a group of the same thinking people and living people and so but they they, they cut my hedge and um, and it was in a scale of uh, who have helped me before they were <laughs> down deep in that they were very bad in in cut the, the hedge but they cut most of the branches that stand out and but i have some some uh, some left behind and i can't do anything i have to see the fact that it has to stay that way but it's not so my landlord will uh, be angry at me 
uh, it's uh, I am going to put the uh, cut hedge uh, on this episode so you can see how they did it and uh, it, it is like they are teenagers they don't see uh, the whole picture and um, and then uh, uh, they helped me to throw away trash and uh, when I was sitting and waiting for them I got the mail from the doctor and I'd be happy because uh, he's he wrote me that he was he was going to send me to a specialist a doctor for the pancreas for uh, because he wrote the, in the letter that uh, my blood sugar can't be uh, hold back or uh, can't be messer so it it's uh, stay low and uh, and I know it uh, it was not him because I have waiting one month for him to write a letter and uh, so it was that I was in the ambulance and that I was in to the hospital that made it uh, and uh, the doctor say that he should look at my my journal my uh, what have happened in my health life and and then uh, take contact with my ordinary doctor so that he have, he have done it it's not my doctor in the clinic that have done it, but he promised me the doctor at the hospital that he should kick the butt <laughs> on the on that doctor that I have in the clinic, so he did something, and now it's has at least been the first step that they are going to look at why I have so high blood sugar even if I uh, they they saw it on in the hospital that I didn't eat any extra uh, with sugar nothing I eat because I wanted them to see that I ate only the food I got from the hospital and I only eat chicken or fish in the food and I get some white rice in the food and I know that white rice is not okay that is too much sugar in it so I didn't eat it I only eat the meat that day and um, so they saw that uh, as I come with the ambulance I could not have anything with me as I was so sick so they saw it and I sometimes I told them that this I can't eat this or drink this because it's too much sugar in it uh, I told them and uh, so th- they saw in in fact that I didn't eat sugar so I I have got this but this is only the first step uh, uh, because I have been in that uh, area before in the hospital and they have denied me uh, and not done anything. I can meet uh, this kind of doctors that doesn't care. 
uh, and then maybe I think I'm too old to do anything on. And uh, sometimes I see it, uh, doctors from from other countries in uh, Arabic countries, and and they treat their own people better than the Swedish. I don't say a hundred percent, but maybe half of them do this. That uh, you are not a Mormon and you are not a Muslim, so I don't care for your health. So I have been in these negative things, but I I need to to uh, trust because now I I know I have to talk to to uh, fear about my situation and you know how big it is when I start when I saw those seagulls coming in uh, that was not the seagull I had coming in before the fear had uh, have order call for the rest of of my ancestors that is in heaven to come and help us so uh, i don't know about this i i told a missionary today about my dream vision dream that these two houses uh, separated from each other and then the, it's coming uh, out from prison in one of the house uh, and run out, out from the prison on the roof and uh, I stand in a gap of, between these two houses and suddenly it come a man jumping and look, and he saw me standing in the gap, and he had a gun, gun, and he, he tried to shoot me, to kill me, but someone on my side, killed him first before he did it, and so, it's a, maybe it is a little open, on this, vision dream I had that uh, it's not really, the gap is not coming together yet. But I I hope it will be that uh, the whole thing will be healed and uh, I can move on in life. I can live a longer life. Uh, but uh, you should know that if if uh, I be killed, if I die, I'm very happy. Uh, not to to be killed, but to go back to to heaven, where I come from, and you come from. Uh, and so I am. Uh, this life. This life has been so extremely hard. This life I have lived has been so extremely hard. So much pain. And uh, scary. And uh, it is not what I have done. Uh, but what uh, people around me have done. Uh, some... Uh, Things in life have I decided to do, and those things because I didn't know anything like I know today about afterlife and get help from afterlife that make me do wrong decision and that make me have. A much harder life than what I should have but as I say uh, it is uh, it is what the, it should be 
you should not uh, be uh, crying or be angry about your past life because that's the only step you take for to come to the right goal and right uh, way that you should walk. It's only uh, something we lay behind us and not need to to bring with us like a backpack. You don't need that. You have to let it go. And you and many times is it uh, people that add it to you and you still hold into those people. And uh, one thing I have done is to not have any picture from the past on my walls. I don't have my my daughter or my son or other, my mother and father, I don't have them on my walls in my home because they it make me be reminded about the past that was very hard so i i pick them down i have beautiful picture of my parents and, and my children but i i i don't want to see them every day and i very seldom thinking like that to look at pictures so that one of the first cleaning i did when uh, i started when i come back to sweden and uh, so uh, it will uh, continue about this with a gap that uh, it should be filled in the gap and maybe is it uh, uh, the gap is filled of these spirits that come down this is this part of my life it's not over it's uh, it's like um, i see it in my spirit eyes and it is like um, it it taking form of something that it always will be to the better in my life but i don't know exactly what it is they are doing because it's a spirit thing they are doing like a gathering together like they showing me like a, a big rock that is burning, is fire, and something they built up in that fire to to fight back to what's going on in this world and in my life. They burning up bad things. They burning up bad people in that way that is not uh, real people is, uh, that is in the fire it is what they have done that is in the fire they don't burn any people they don't burn a body that's not how they do it they burning up what was that person in there if they had a spirit if they were evil s uh, spirits and they burn up those bad things and they be like harmless for us that's what they showing me uh, it it's um I will see if they are telling me or they showing me something. It is 
they are very busy to make a big pile of fire and many like layers layers uh, in that fire so it's not only on the ground it is built up a big mountain with the things in this world that they clean up from that's what they are doing just now so it's going to continue about this with this two house and the gap between them it's symbolic so you that uh, understand the symbolic in it the spirit and the symbolic in it you understand what's going on or else I will tell you when I see much more of it. They have just started. It's not a, an old thing. It's a new thing. Have coming into this world. And it's a burning. You can call it a burning hell if you want to do that. But it is not screaming people in the fire. It's what, it's all this emotional, weird, negative emotional. Uh, it's uh, those anger, those all killing thinking in a person that they, they fire up. So that's the message for this chapter. So thank you for listening. And take care of you. You know God loves you.